Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss what memoization in Java is. Well, would you like to do same task again and again when you know that it is going to give you same result? Probably no, right? So memoization concept is all about that. So it ensures that a method does not execute more than once for the same input. And it achieves this by storing the results in a data structure like hash table and hash map. So let us understand with an example. So here is a code for the Fibonacci series. So Fibonacci series is a series of numbers generated such that uh, each number is actually formed by the sum of previous two numbers. For example, zero and one are the first two numbers. And you can see here, the third number is generated by the sum of previous two numbers, zero plus one is one, right? And next number is generated by the sum of previous two numbers, one plus one, two, two plus one, three, three plus two, five, five plus three, eight, and so on. So this is how Fibonacci series is formed, right? So this is the recursive code to generate the series. And uh, you can see here, I uh, have a main method. This is the code block, uh, a recursive function to generate the Fibonacci series. And you can see here, it actually, we pass a parameter here to the Fibonacci method, this Fibonacci method, which actually displays the number based on the index, right? And the index starts with zero. So here I'm passing five here. So let me execute this method and verify. So we are passing five as the parameter. So it has to actually print the number in this series with index five. So index starts with zero, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it, it prints five, right? So this is a recursive function to actually find out the Fibonacci series, uh, right? Uh, now let us actually understand memorization with this example, right? So for that, so what's the problem with this recursive function? Let us first understand that. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'll just print this here. We are going to calculate Fibonacci number for n for each uh, number in the Fibonacci series, right? So let me execute this and show you. So here we can clearly see calculating Fibonacci number for five. So it's a recursive function, right? It actually need to calculate the sum of the previous two numbers. So you can see here it actually calculating for five Fibonacci series for four, three, so if you observe here, there is a redundant uh, processing here. So Fibonacci uh, for three has been calculated twice. And for two, you can see it actually calculated more than once. That, that is like it actually calculated three times, right? So this is all redundant. So we wanted to avoid this redundant processing. So what's the solution? So the solution is memoization. So how are we actually going to uh, achieve memoization to solve this problem? Right, so uh, in this example, right? So when we executed this, you have seen this. It actually executing like uh, uh, for multiple times. So to better understand why it is actually executing uh, uh, for the same number multiple times. So let's interpret this in a tree structure. So you can see we are calculating it for Fibonacci five, right? So I'm representing it as F of five. So it's, it will be the sum of f of four and three, right? Then we wanted to calculate for four. So it will be three and two. For f of three, it will be two and one, f of two plus f of one, right? And again, you can see we wanted to calculate f of three. It's a recursive function, right? f of two plus f of one. f of two will be one plus zero, right? Again, we need to calculate f of two, f of one plus f of zero, right? And so on, right? If you observe here in this tree structure, we can clearly see in the red, right, uh, red ovals clearly indicate that it's a redundant, like f of three has been calculated once here, and it is again repeated here on the left side, right? Same is the case for f of two as well. So we can clearly see that there is a redundant processing here. So we wanted to solve this problem. So let's actually solve this using memoization concept, right? So memoization is all about like, uh, we can either actually create a hash map or a hash table, and we are going to cache the result. So for example, let's say I create a map here, like memoize table. 
is my map, which actually has key and value as integers, right? So what we are going to do now is we are going to find the, or in this map, we will actually verify if this table contains the key. Key is n. So if it has n, then we are not going to process or we are not going to calculate the Fibonacci for n again. We will just return from the table the value. Right? Say for example, if it is not there, the key is not there for the Fibonacci series. For the first time, the n value for Fibonacci is being calculated. Then what to do? Then we need to actually put the result into the table. Put n into result. Right? n is the number and result is the actual uh, number in the Fibonacci series, right? And just for our understanding, let's have some statements here so that it's actually fetching value from MIS table if it is present, right? And if it is not there, it actually puts it in the cache. So this is what we did. We just added a map here. So we created a map and what did we do? So we wanted to put each time the result into the map. And each time when we wanted to calculate the Fibonacci for any number, we just verify the map if it already has the value for it. Yes, if it is there, then this will become true and we return the value from the map. So this is what we have did here to solve the problem, right? So let me execute the program now. So you can clearly see here, putting result in cache for two. So first for two, it has been calculated and for three as well. So those are in the map now, fetching value from MS table for two. So we had a requirement to actually generate the Fibonacci for two, but this time we are not going to actually calculate F of two. We are fetching it from the map or the MS table is a map name here, right? So we are going to fetch it from that map. You can see here, it calculates for four and Three, we already calculated. So it just fetches from the map. Five, it, cal it is calculating for five, right? So at any point of time, so the it actually calculates the Fibonacci for, for a number only once and puts it into the cache or a map. And if at all it, it is required for the next time, it just fetches from the map instead of actually calculating it again. So, and this actually avoids the redundant processing. Right, so the processing will be faster, thereby increasing the performance. Right, so this is how actually we can solve the, uh, you know, dynamic uh, problems. Uh, so dynamic uh, programming problems as well. So mainly memorization is a common strategy actually for dynamic programming problems, uh, where the solution is composed of solutions to the same problem but with smaller inputs. Right, so this is the main usage of the memorization in Java. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.